that's too weird. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start taking questions for Jamie and Justin. Sean Shapiro, The Athletic. Hey, this is for both of you guys. I know, Justin, you just played your first game in the final yesterday, but you've both played in championship series before in, in the AHL before, and I'm curious if that experience is something you rely on at all or think about uh, in, in this series being the first time you're playing in the Stanley Cup final. Um, yeah, I think it's something that you can look back on and um, kind of something you can relate relate back towards and some of the key moments that you had in that playoff run. And uh, we had another one a couple of years ago too, going to the finals um, again. So it's, it's definitely something where um, the ups and downs of a playoff series that you go through, it's, you've been through it before and um, yeah, it's just something that you can look back on and, and know that you've been there and you've done it. And um, hopefully it uh, carries you forward in uh, the series. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Dallas summed it up pretty well there. I think there's a lot of highs and lows that come with playoffs, and you got to kind of learn to uh, control those emotions and just to focus the task at hand <clears throat> and take it a game at a time. And um, I think those past runs have definitely given us that experience. Matt DeFranks, Dallas Morning News. Hey, Jamie, we've seen that John is uh, pretty skilled at getting pucks uh, through from the blue line. What, what makes him able to do that so consistently? Um, I mean, I think he's one of the best guys in the league at just walking the blue line and just, uh, you know, finding that space and being able to attack it. And I think he's really shifty. And um, I think it's been a huge strength in his game. And I mean, you saw last night that, that created that uh, big scoring opportunity for Perry. So, um, yeah, he's always been really good at it, and obviously it's uh, it's been shining these playoffs. Rob Tichkowski, Post Media. Yeah, hi, Jamie. Uh, you wouldn't think that a team would actually gain energy after going to double overtime in the second of back-to-back -back games, but I'm just wondering what impact that winning game five had on, on your room. I know you're supposed to keep an even keel, but uh, just what did it do for you guys? Uh. <clears throat> Obviously, it's huge. I think, you know, um, when you're in a situation like that, uh, some desperation comes in and I think experience comes in. And I think those guys stepped up big for us. You know, the, you know, Perry and Pavelski and guys that have played in key games like that and had their backs against the wall. And um, yeah, I think as a group, we just kind of took it a, a period of time. And, you know, I think um, as long as we stay out of the box, I think we showed that we can definitely play at these guys and you know when we play our game the results will come oh and newkirk dallas stars radio yeah hi guys uh, justin i've known you long enough and jamie you as well to know that not surprised at all for you to be able to come in after such a long layoff but i was wondering if you could just describe what it's like to try to keep yourself mentally ready to play because I, I think we counted yesterday that you've dressed for pregame warm-up 17 times before getting your first game of this and you hadn't played since the exhibition game. Given that, how do you keep yourself sharp going into a game last night? I think it started uh, in March when the pause happened. It's we're off for three months and then now I was off for another two months almost here in the bubble. So I think it started the preparation for me and staying mentally with it. I think it started back in March when uh, the, when the pause happened. Um, you got to be able to, to keep your mind sharp and your body sharp. And, um, I mean, there's only so much you can do in practice to get, uh, that game feel. So, uh, it took me a period or so to get into it and get my lungs and my legs back into it. But, um, I think, uh, I, I think the way I think the game on the ice and the way I play it, um, it, it helps me in situations like this. Uh, also, just during the year, I, I mean, I would I'd play a game and then you sit out three or four and hop back in again. I think um, uh, being able to do that during the year and be successful and come in and, and do a job and do the task at hand, I think that helped me as well. Greg Wyshynski, ESPN. Thanks a lot. Hey, Jamie, uh, yesterday, Joe Pavelski was talking about the dynamic of uh, having gone to war against Corey Perry and then all of a sudden being his teammate. And I was wondering if you could talk about that dynamic of a guy that generates a lot of heat as an opponent and is all of a sudden now uh, on your team. Uh, in terms of Perry? 
in terms of Perry or just in general, when you, you've gone against somebody that much and, and he's, he's, well, he's, he kind of plays like Corey Perry. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think he's one of those guys where, you know, you kind of hate playing against him, but when he's on your team, I mean, you see what he's done out there and, you know, just the energy he brings to the game and, you know, his, his competitiveness. I think it, it's when you got a guy in that, like that on your team, I think you just kind of feed off of his energy and, um, Paris is obviously, he was huge for us last night and he comes up big in big moments and, um, yeah, I can't say enough of that guy. I mean, you know, obviously the, the competitive, his competitiveness is the main thing that comes to mind and, uh, you know, night in, night out, he's going to be battling and no matter what the situation is, what the, you know, the score is or whatever, he's, uh, he's going to play hard. So, um, I think, you know, it's a good, uh, role model for other guys in the team, younger guys and, um, yeah, it's definitely something we can look to in terms of leadership for that. Mike Heike, DallasStars.com. Hey, Jamie, uh, how do you feel, one, after playing back-to-back -back overtime games? And two, do you think it'll affect uh, game six, or do you think everybody's pretty fresh right now? Uh, yeah, yeah, unique. I mean, Stanley Cup finals, back-to-backs, I mean, that's, you know, who knows we're going to see that again. It's, it's pretty wild, but um, I think, you know, in this situation, in the finals, you're going to get your best uh, from guys no matter what. So, um, you know, obviously it, it, it's taxing playing those OT back-to-back -back games, but I'm sure game six, everyone's going to be uh, buzzing around again. And, yeah, I think you can't expect anyone to lay off the gas at all. I think in this situation, it's, you know, obviously, uh, you know, a little bit of desperation. And um, I think – you got to have that energy. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not too worried about that. Sean Shapiro, The Athletic. Hey, Justin, have you thought at all about what the story is going to be like to tell uh, your daughter when she's old enough to remember and hear, hear stories like this? Yeah, we've talked about it quite a bit. It's, it's definitely a weird time to have a, your first child during a pandemic. And, um, yeah, I mean, all, all our pictures, all our first pictures with the family when she met her was everyone's wearing masks and stuff. So it's, I think when she gets old enough to, to be able to look back on pictures and ask what's going on, it's going to be a unique story to tell her um, that part of her life or her early stages of life she spent inside the NHL bubble during the Stanley Cup finals, which is a pretty, pretty cool story in itself to be able to tell her. And I hope that she... Uh, cherishes it as much as me and Meg are right now. Matt DeFrank, Dallas Morning News. Hey, Justin, just following up on that, how has your, your bubble routine changed since your family's got here? How different is a day like today, an off day, uh, versus a month ago before they got here? Changing diapers, <laughs> laying around on the floor with, with her while she plays. Um, I mean, she sleeps like a rock. She sleeps more than I do. I was up before she was today, so no issues sleeping or anything like that. Um, yeah, just a, a lot more time spent with her and um, trying to find different ways to, to get out and about with her too. We don't want to just be stuck in the hotel with her. So today we tried to get out and go to a restaurant for, for breakfast and just uh, we went and hit up one of the golf simulators there and just tried to get out and about. I, I, I don't know how it feels to be a baby, but I, I feel like she wouldn't want to be crammed up in a room um, all that long. So we're trying to get her out and, and also her socializing with people. It's nice when people come up to her and talk to her. It's, um, we just want her to be more involved too. We'll take a couple more to finish. Owen Newkirk, Dallas Stars Radio. Yeah, Justin, we've heard from Bones a lot during the, you know, bubble life and guys from like Jamie and all the guys that have been on the ice a lot talking about the various things they've done to keep everybody involved, whether it's the guys that are in and out of the lineup or the black ace guys that are practicing over and over again, from your perspective, because you've now been on both sides of that. Can you give us a little bit of an insight as to what they've done to keep everybody feeling of integral part of the group? Yeah. Well, for the most part, we haven't had too many um, just team structured practices. A lot of it's been optional. So for the most part, both groups have been skating together, um, which I think that's huge. You need that team camaraderie and you need everyone involved. Um, we're doing, uh, we do team meetings together. Everyone's involved too. Um, family videos are being shown. 
Uh, we're trying to get everyone, even people outside the bubble with families. Uh, we want everyone to be involved. This isn't just us inside the bubble that are trying to win the Stanley Cup. It's families are involved too, and they're all making sacrifices just like we are. Last question, Neil McHale. Hey, uh, Justin, if you look at the structure of this Stars team, there's a lot of guys who, you know, spent some time in the minors this past season. What does it say that, you know, so many people are able to come in and have success and stay in the line about the leadership group of this team and, and also your coach, Rick? Yeah, I think it says a lot about the organization um, to be able to have guys that are able to come in and step up. Um, guys of all age, too. Uh, doesn't matter how many years they've been in the league. They Everyone's able to step in and I think that says a lot too about our coaching staff and the leadership on our team. Um, they make everyone feel welcome. Uh, they make the systems easy to, to know and understand. Um, like I said, we've been doing a lot of practicing together um, where now they're optional ice times where everyone's on the ice together. Um, I just think it's a, it's a great environment for, for guys to come in and step in and feel like they can contribute right away. And uh, where, Bones has been placing guys in the lineup too. It's giving them the opportunity to have success and, and play the role that, that they need to to come in and uh, contribute to the team. Thanks, guys.